Hi, my name is Crystal Fletcher, and welcome to All About Canadian Books. It's 2023, and it's my first interview, and I'm thrilled to be kicking it off with the dynamic mother-daughter duo writing team, Ali and Hesa Christensen. If you missed our the first part of this interview, we got to know the the writing team a little better. It's a fascinating interview. I'll put links down below so you can catch it. In this segment, we'll be talking about the story behind Stealing John Hancock, which is their debut novel, and it was published by Ravenstone. And it is a fast ride thriller, and I loved it. And I'm so excited that we're going to be talking about it today. And before we do talk about it, um, can can you tell us a little bit about what the novel's about? Sure. Well, as you said, it's a thriller and our protagonist is J.P. Hancock, John Paul Hancock, and that's where the title comes from. And he is a young adult in his 20s who hasn't really figured out what he's going to do with his life yet. He sort of he keeps trying new things and none of them work out and he's feeling quite down on himself and directionless and thinks he's not doing a good job at this life thing. But then things get a whole lot worse <laughs> when a cyber criminal steals his identity and uses it to commit the crime of house stealing, which is a real crime that um, involves combining mortgage and identity frauds to essentially steal houses. And he commits this crime under JP's name. And JP thinks, the, or the police think JP has done this, so they are after him and he has to find a way to clear his name. <laughs> It really is one fast ride. Like I was just zipping through it. I'm like, I have to find out what happens to JP. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, while we're talking about JP, I will ask, um, what drives JP? So, well, don't answer that sure. Yeah. So um, there's a, a, a pretty substantial backstory to JP, and it involves the relationship with his grandparents and the a responsibility that he feels. And also driving him is um, is a, a, a typical scenario with, I think, a lot of uh, younger people that feel that they really have to achieve that I think that the world has become a, 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 a you know a bit of a hard place as far as having to get ahead having to 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 really make your mark and even you know make money and be successful yeah. not just younger people all people but it, there are a lot of pressure on younger people mm -hmm. and I think in modern society there's this sense that your sense of self-worth and your identity is tied into what you accomplish and I think that that is in his misguided state driving him to to try to be something beyond who he just is and then he and then he um he becomes acquainted with with someone who wants to help him through his dilemma and she actually calls him account on a lot of the preconceptions he has about about what life is all about and what constitutes identity and happiness and mm -hmm. so she is she's a driving force in that yeah yeah. And I act, I really liked Erica as a character. You know, she um she was you know the polar opposite of JP in so many yes. ways. Yeah. Yeah. So who was more fun to write, like Erica or JP, would you say? They were both a lot of fun to yeah, write. Yeah, and and very different. And yeah. um and I, I you know, I would lean towards saying that Erica was more fun to write. And because she's so dynamic and enigmatic and she has um uh just a very quirky nature that was really fun to explore. Yeah. So she sort of she's a she's a hacker in the story with an incredible skill set and really brilliant. Um, but I also really liked writing JP really for his vulnerability. Yeah. So he he struggles a lot with anxiety and you get to see a lot into who he is and what motivates him through his flaws. And I really enjoyed writing his flaws. <laughs> <laughs> and where like where did the idea for the story originate? Well, it's interesting because um, people just 
in the last few days have been sending us articles about house stealing. And there's a there's a case right now in Toronto that's getting a, a lot of news coverage. But it was exactly that 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 was the impetus for for the plot of the story. And that was seeing an article It was in a paper newspaper on the table in um, in, in Hayes's kitchen. And we we both read it and we thought that it was just incredulous and so bizarre that that a house could be stolen, that the that the owner of the house would not know that title was transferred from their house and actually sold to someone else. And um, so that's that really piqued our interest in imagination. Yeah, the, the story that's in the news now is um, a Toronto couple who bought a house that wasn't for sale. Um, and so they never took possession of it, you know, going to move in and discover that there's somebody else living there and that you bought something that was never for sale. But just the enormity of the impact of that um, and the bizarreness of the yeah. crime, like how crazy that you can steal a giant immovable object. Someone from England sent us an article too, a vicar in England had the same thing happen to his, his house. Yes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, now he, he was the owner of the house yeah. and he had, if I recall the story correctly, he had been elsewhere for a while and then his neighbor called and said, hey, did you sell your house? There's someone doing a renovation project in there. <laughs> and he went over and the contractor was there and he was like, what are you doing in my house? And the contractor was like, uh, no, I'm working for the homeowner. That's not you. <laughs> Yeah. And in that particular case, the vicar called the police and the police initially told him that it wasn't a criminal matter. It was a civil matter because the the land record showed that the house was not didn't belong to him. They said, no, no, somebody else owns it now. It's, it's not your house anymore. But months later, it was uncovered that, no, it was a criminal matter because there was identity theft and fraud involved. But yeah, yeah. it's it's so fun now that we've written this book, <laughs> readers of yeah. it keep sending us stories like hey I just saw this here and this happened here and it's yeah. And yeah people are writing wow this really does happen yeah <laughs> which before we came across that article we had no idea this yeah. happened yeah. yeah yeah I know I took an extra interest in it because I knew I would be talking to you too and having read your book it's like yeah. holy cow <laughs> and do you find like you would have done a lot of research into identity theft do you do anything differently now that you've um, written your book? <laughs> well, I'm more fearful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You never Me too. know. <laughs> um, so I, I, I actually, I've changed passwords. Yes. Yeah, yeah. you have. Yeah. Yes, I have. And I was, I was terrible for always using the same password over and over again, because I can remember, I never do that now. My passwords are like all different and they're all very convoluted <laughs> very convoluted yeah not things that anybody would guess um yeah and I'm careful with my credit card as well like yeah yeah so I I definitely am more careful yeah, yeah but you know even you know, like these things inevitably happen and someone gets your credit card number and you know and there are charges on there that aren't yours things like that yeah, yeah. Now that one's not so bad usually, as long as you're on top of what your charges are, because the credit card company. Yeah, as long as your house is good. stolen. Yes, when <laughs> your house is stolen, you've got a bigger problem. I know. I just, it's just, I couldn't fathom it. But <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, another interesting thing is we've had a lot of friends and family members come forward and tell us their stories of things that have happened to them. Um, and what was it? Your uncle? That... My, yeah, my uncle, um, who was in in New York. Um, fell for like we get those uh, Canada, uh, Canada Revenue Agency you're going to be arrested if you don't he actually fell for that with the IRS in New York yeah. and ended up losing eight thousand dollars yeah and he yeah. was in his 80s yeah yeah and he, yeah. Was, and he was so scared yeah yeah, Aww, yeah. that's so sad <laughs> um, another character I really liked in your book was Corporal Gray and I think she, I mean, she was hot on JP's trail the, the whole time, but I thought that she added a really interesting layer to the story. Can you explain a little bit about uh, Corporal Gray and her role in your book? Yeah. Do you want me to answer it? Okay. So I find that in our writing, our characters sort of evolve and emerge and show themselves to us in the early stages. So when we, we knew we needed a, uh, 
police officer character there. Um, but it was actually originally a man mm -hmm. and just, it, uh, and I, middle-aged, I can't really remember much about him now, but he was just, he was a really flat character. And we weren't concerned about that. We just knew we hadn't found our character. And then he kept evolving and evolving. And one of the things that inspired us with, with, her, with uh, Corporal Gray is um, there have been a lot of stories in the yeah. news. It was about, more, more news. Yeah. Yes, more news about women in the RCMP and their experiences of sexism and harassment within that organization. And we actually met with different women affected by this and heard their stories. And the more we read and the more we spoke with people. She formed and she came formed. to life. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And there's almost a sense of like a character being born as you discover who they are. Um, and that was very much the case with her. And it took time. It, it happened over the course of a few months. And then eventually she got to the point where we just felt like we knew her. We understood her. We connected with her. And we're like, oh, yes, this is. Yeah, and the challenges she, she, was, is. she was facing. And yeah. 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 yeah no, oh, I thought. And <laughs> Oh sorry. oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say, I thought she was incredible. And I thought it like, and this is the beauty of fiction too, or any book is what you can add into that layer. That's so relevant in today's society. Mm -hmm. Right. And we get so much inspiration from what we're reading about that's happening in the yes. world today. Yes. Um, I was going to say another interesting thing about uh, Corporal Naya Gray is that the book that we're writing now, which is not a sequel, um, she is in. Yeah. So she comes, she's the only character from this book that overlaps and comes into that one as well. So, yeah. 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 So, so we wanted to stick with her. <laughs> and then past her actual character, we also met with RCMP officers to get the procedurals down right mm -hmm. and, and the, the organization of the RCMP. Yeah. yeah. People were very generous with their time yeah. when there were things we needed to research. Yeah. And it's so funny because maybe just naturally as writers which is sort of an introverted profession um it took us a while to to get to the point of actually reaching out to people who were professionals in a field to ask them yeah. for help we were happy googling we, yeah. could, we could google forever and we're comfortable doing that but then there are limits the information isn't especially in the policing world isn't always very up to date and there's there can be a lot of confusion because there's overlap and often the way things sit policy wise isn't the way it's they not play out. Reality. Yeah. yeah. So it took us a while to get out to reach yeah. out to our CMP officers about the procedural side of things. But then people were very generous with their time. And I don't know why we didn't do it sooner. So yeah. this this time around, we're gonna reach out sooner. We're Lots. gonna be brave. <laughs> That, and, and that's yeah. a great point and a great lesson for uh, any other writers who are who are listening right now. Yeah, like go for it, right? Seriously. Yes. Yeah. And honestly, we never had anyone have a negative reaction. I think when, when people are experts in an area and there's someone else who's generally interested in learning about it, yeah. most people are happy to share that information. Yeah. 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 Anything surprise you during your interviews with the RCMP? Well, that... What you read online, even like directly from their websites, isn't necessarily the way things are operating at this time. So that I didn't realize that beforehand, that it's not always up to date and that also that these organizations are dynamic and they evolve and they adjust to what the needs are at the time. Um, so it's it's so important to actually get that inside information. Mm -hmm. and now, that said, I, I should add on that there are inaccuracies in our book. There are things that we took creative license with um, because it served the story better. So we wanted to know how it works, but then we also thought, well, this is fiction. We should do what's best for the story and, yeah. and adjust it accordingly, which is one of the yeah. fun things about fiction. <laughs> yeah, I gotta love fiction. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> gotta love fiction. And I, I'm sure for anyone who is watching, they're probably very fascinated that it's, you know, a mother daughter writing duo. So can you kind of describe your writing process for us? Like, how do you make this work? Um, well, it was actually easy in the evolution of us working together. Yeah. That um, I was a, a, a writer before in the corporate world. And then I, then I started in, in screenwriting and mainly polishing screenplays. And, um, and I just thought uh, Hesa would be 
just fabulous to work with on this. And in the screen, in the screenwriting world, it's, it's more typical for, for there to be teams of writers. It's very common. So, yeah. and um, I knew she was brilliant. And, <laughs> <laughs> and I just thought it would be fun. And, and uh, there was an opportunity and, and you took it. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So I think because we started in screenwriting where collaboration is really the norm it just naturally evolved into novel writing. And I know different people have different ways, different teams of writers have different ways of writing together. And some people have it separated. So one writer writes one section and one writer writes the next section, but we don't do that. We actually write everything together. Yeah, and, and there's a lot of outlining that goes to, in the beginning of the process. So we know where the story is going and very specifically, basically throughout the entire story, what, what, where we want to go and where we want to end. So then, um, yeah, then we yeah. take bits and we work on them and, and uh, we can be together or we can be in different countries and we work with screen sharing technology and yeah. Yeah. And so even if one of us has the first pass at a paragraph or a chapter or a scene or whatever it is, the next one will then write over top of that. And there's sort of an editing process that is intrinsic in it. And I think on a first draft level, it takes probably a little longer to write this way, but then you've already had an edit built into it. And I think as we get further along, it probably goes a bit faster in, in a later draft phase. And, and, and we're, we're very compatible. And yeah. I think, I mean, both respect the other's thoughts and, and their, and ideas. So yeah. I think that's really important. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I, wouldn't want, I wouldn't want to do this with anyone else. <laughs> no, because you, you, you keep thinking like writers have such distinct voices where you're yeah. blending a books, but it, it doesn't read like different. It's so I, it, it's, I just think it's amazing that in a, a credit to both of you that it just is so smooth. So, yeah, I think we've created a kind of a combined voice. Yeah. Yeah. That, we're, that we've yeah. worked in for so yeah. long now that we're quite comfortable with it and it comes quite naturally. So, and honestly, we, ha I mean, I, I, I think we have more fun. I think it's, <laughs> I think it's more fun writing with somebody else. I do because when, if you can do it, if you, you know? can do it, if you can do, it, if it's the right person, when yeah. things are going well, you have someone to share that excitement with. And you're like, oh yeah, this, I love what we do. Yeah. This. Oh, okay. you know, just, well, we'll get up and dance around. <laughs> oh yeah. So she relates everything to songs. Like everything reminds her of a song. And so we'll be in the middle of something and she'll be like, oh, you know what this reminds me of? And then she'll start playing a song and then she's up dancing all the time. And I don't think that that's a typical writing experience no. for most people. But likewise, as any writer knows, there's also really down, down times, down whether times. it's getting yeah. rejections or whether it's being stuck on something or just not being able to achieve what you have in mind and to have somebody to commiserate with, yeah. like to be able to share that, like in times it's grief to be able to share that grief with someone else mm -hmm. and to feel like you're in it with someone else is like, it's a blessing. Like it's really, really nice. Yeah. Yeah. And the next question, which I, I've heard you answer this before, but for viewers who haven't, I think it's, I think it's worth, it's worth oh, no. <laughs> it be? What, do, what do you do if you don't agree on what you're working on? <laughs> No, oh, I know where you heard us answer this question and we disagreed about the answer. <laughs> and and I, I totally floored Asa. <laughs> Because you said we didn't disagree. And I was like, yes, we do. We disagree. <laughs> We're going to disagree right now about not disagreeing. No, because I was thinking about in a broader in, in the perspective. End. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So and we discussed this after we answered it last time. Yeah. So because originally Ali was saying that we don't disagree. And I was like, yeah, we do. We disagree. But so as we thought about it, we realized we don't disagree very often because we make sure we spend a lot of time on that outlining that Ali was talking about to make sure we have a shared vision for each character, each scene, everything. We know we've come up with a joint plan for what we want to accomplish, which definitely lessens the disagreements. But also, and I think what she was getting at when she was saying we didn't disagree. Was that we're never at loggerheads. Well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to disagree on that one too. 
We don't disagree in the end. There is yeah. never a time when <laughs> one of us has to just suck it up and go, well, that's not what I would have done. But if that's what you want to do, mm -hmm. I guess we'll just do it your way. That's never happened. Because we both care so much about our stories and about yeah. what we're doing that we never feel like either one of us should be in the position where we have to compromise what we believe is the best course of action. So what we do is we will debate for like, if, if it's 10 minutes, it's 10 minutes, but if it's three days, it's three days. We don't move forward until we agree. And I guess that's what you were getting at yes. is that we don't, neither one of us has to just go, okay, whatever, <laughs> you know, just do what you want. Then <laughs> we will stay with it, but we'll, we'll, it, it forces you to be critical of your own thought process and to have to justify that to someone else. And in the act of having and to explain. It's kind of an ongoing editing process. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. because it'll be like, well, why do you think we should do it that way? And she'll have to explain. And then it'll be, the, why do you think it should be that way? And then we have to weigh the relative merits and drawbacks of each approach. And then eventually we'll end up with something that we both agree on. Yeah. 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 <laughs> do you both agree? <laughs> we both agree on that answer now. <laughs> Yeah, just, just, just last time. Just checking. <laughs> last time afterwards, I was like, "What do you mean we don't disagree?" And she's like, "Well, we don't disagree in the end." <laughs> yeah, but it came out quite funny. Yeah, at, in, in the launch. Yeah, yeah, because I think we were both floored by the other person's response. And we're like, "What?" <laughs> yeah. Well, you, you got it down now. <laughs> almost <laughs> yeah no it's it, it's great because I imagine if 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 it wasn't if it was a battle then it wouldn't be any fun yeah well I don't know sometimes a battle can be <laughs> fun <laughs> but, but I think but, the point is that we've worked through it so much yeah that it's come it, it comes to a point where yes this mm -hmm. is it and I think you know it, I think it's interesting that um um, editor at Turnstone um, said that this was such a clean book be, and there wasn't a lot of editing to do because um, uh, yeah, I it's think because we're always we, editing each because other. Because we're always editing each other. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's interesting. Um, and because you've spent so much time together, I mean, growing <laughs> up together and now working together, has your relationship changed since you've written the book? Like, how has it added to your relationship, would you say? Well, I would say that writing is the most fun we have together. Oh, so I don't know if yeah. you would agree with that. Yeah, it's just, it's such a special thing to yeah. have, a, have to, to do together. Yeah. yeah, we're both doing something we love. And I really respect her work and the way her mind works. And, you know, like with any family, sometimes there's drama or there's stresses over something or, you know, there's something going on. And when we go to write, all of that is left behind and we enter our creative space and yeah, produce something. I know? mean, it's just been such a joy and blessing. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah. yeah. And what, what's next for you two? What, may I ask what project you're working on or should I, or should I know? <laughs> no, yeah, go. Yeah. yeah. Um, do you well, want to answer or you go ahead? Yeah. Okay. So uh, the working title for it right now is called Tracking the Descent. I don't know if we'll stay with that, but um, we're, we've, we've come to like it. Yeah. We're, it, yeah it seems yeah. to be suiting what we're doing. Yeah. So yeah. it's a mystery thriller and it's set in sort of the same area. And as we mentioned, there is one character overlap, but it's, you know, it's kind of sort of the same universe, but not mostly the same characters. And it's an exploration of basically how far a basically good person will go for what they rightly or wrongly believe is self-preservation mm -hmm. so we're both drawn to books that are fast-paced plot wise and have twists and turns and a lot to keep you on the edge of your seat but also explore something about the human condition and what motivates people to act the way they do and mm -hmm. and how that can go awry and and why you yeah. know it's much about it's much about why as it is about what mm -hmm. I'm intrigued. Oh, and there's a murder. Yeah. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> kind of. Oh, <laughs> oh Allie and Hesa Christensen, 
thank you so much for being guests on All About Canadian Books. I've enjoyed getting to know you and also the story behind, and I'll hold it up again, <laughs> Stealing John Hancock. For viewers, I'll put links down below in the description box so you can learn more about Ali and Hesa and also purchase a copy of Stealing John Hancock. It's a great book. Thank you for watching and thank you, ladies. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Crystal. This has been so much fun. Yeah, it really has. With you. I've Thanks had fun too. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye. <laughs>